Question 1. What is XML? Answer. XML is the extensible markup language. It improves the functionality of the web by letting you identify your information in a more accurate, flexible, and adaptable way. It is extensible because it is not a fixed format like HTML, which is a single predefined markup language. Instead, XML is actually a meta language, a language for describing other languages, which lets you design your own markup languages for limitless different types of documents. XML can do this because it's written in SGML, the international standard meta language for text document markup ISO 8879. Question 2. What is a markup language? Answer. A markup language is a set of words and symbols for describing the identity of pieces of a document. For example, this is a paragraph, this is a heading, this is a list, this is the caption of this figure, etc. Programs can use this with a style sheet to create output for screen, print, audio, video, braille, etc. Some markup languages, for example those used in word processors, only describe appearances. This is italics, this is bold, but this method can only be used for display and is not normally reusable for anything else. Question 3. Why is XML such an important development? Answer. It removes two constraints which were holding back web developments. 1. Dependence on a single, inflexible document type. HTML, which was being much abused for tasks it was never designed for, to the complexity of full SGML, whose syntax allows many powerful but hard to program options. XML allows the flexible development of user-defined document types. It provides a robust, non-proprietary, persistent, and verifiable file format for the storage and transmission of text and data both on and off the web, and it removes the more complex options of SGML, making it easier to program for. Question 4. Describe the role that XSL can play when dynamically generating HTML pages from a relational database. Answer. Even if candidates have never participated in a project involving this type of architecture, they should recognize it as one of the common uses of XML. Querying a database and then formatting the result set so that it can be validated as an XML document allows developers to translate the data into an HTML table using XSLT rules. Consequently, the format of the resulting HTML HTML table can be modified without changing the database query or application code since the document rendering logic is isolated to the XSLT rules. Question 5. What is SGML? Answer. SGML is the standard generalized markup language. ISO 8879-1986. The international standard for defining descriptions of the structure of different types of electronic document. Question 6. What about non-XML resources? Answer. You can use this pointer framework with non-XML resources. This is especially effective when your resource is backed by some kind of a DBMS or when you want to query a data model such as RDF and not the XML syntax of a representation of that data model. However, please note that the authoritative interpretation of the fragment identifier is determined by the internet media type. If you want to opt in for pointer, then you can always create publish your own internet media type with Yana and specify that it supports this pointer framework for some kind of non-XML resource. In this case, you are going to need to declare your own pointer schemes as well. Question 7. Who is responsible for XML? Answer. XML is a project of the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, and the development of the specification is supervised by an XML working group. A special interest group of co-opted contributors and experts from various fields contributed comments and reviews by email. XML is a public format. It is not a proprietary development of any company. Although the membership of the WG and the SIG represented companies as well as research and academic institutions. The V1.0 specification was accepted by the W3C as a recommendation on February 10, 1998. Question 8. Give a few examples of types of applications that can benefit from using XML. Answer. There are literally thousands of applications that can benefit from XML technologies. The point of this question is not to have the candidate rattle off all laundry list of projects that they have worked on, but rather to allow the candidate to explain the rationale for choosing XML by citing a few real-world examples. For instance, one appropriate answer is that XML allows content management systems to store documents 
documents independently of their format which thereby reduces data redundancy. Another answer relates to B2B exchanges or supply chain management systems. In these instances, XML provides a mechanism for multiple companies to exchange data according to an agreed upon set of rules. A third common response involves wireless applications that require WML to render data on handheld devices. Question 9. What is DOM and how does it relate to XML? Answer. The Document Object Model DOM, is an interface specification maintained by the W3C DOM work group that defines an application-independent mechanism to access, parse, or update XML data. In simple terms it is a hierarchical model that allows developers to manipulate XML documents easily. Any developer that has worked extensively with XML should be able to discuss the concept and use of DOM objects freely. Additionally, it is not unreasonable to expect advanced candidates to thoroughly understand its internal workings and be able to explain how DOM differs from an event-based interface like SACS. Question 10. What is SOAP and how does it relate to XML? Answer. The Simple Object Access Protocol SOAP, uses XML to define a protocol for the exchange of information in distributed computing environments. SOAP consists of three components, an envelope, a set of encoding rules, and a convention for representing remote procedure calls. Unless experience with SOAP is a direct requirement for the open position, knowing the specifics of the protocol or how it can be used in conjunction with HTTP is not as important as identifying it as a natural application of XML. Question 11. Why not just carry on extending HTML? Answer. HTML was already overburdened with dozens of interesting but incompatible inventions from different manufacturers because it provides only one way of describing your information. XML allows groups of people or organizations to question C.13, create their own customized markup applications for exchanging information in their domain, music, chemistry, electronics, hill walking, finance, surfing, petroleum, geology, linguistics statistics, cooking, knitting, stellar cartography, history, engineering, rabbit keeping, question C.19, mathematics, genealogy, etc. HTML is now well beyond the limit of its usefulness as a way of describing information and while it will continue to play an important role for the content it currently represents, many new applications require a more robust and flexible infrastructure. Question 12. Can I use Java to create or manage XML files? Answer. Yes. Any programming language can be used to output data from any source in XML format. There is a growing number of front-ends and back-ends for programming environments and data management environments to automate this. Java is just the most popular one at the moment. There is a large body of middleware APIs written in Java and other languages for managing data either in XML or with XML input or output. Question 13. Can you walk us through the steps necessary to pass XML documents? Answer. Superficially. This is a fairly basic question. However, the point is not to determine whether candidates understand the concept of a parser but rather have them walk through the process of passing XML documents step by step. Determining whether a non-validating or validating parser is needed. Choosing the appropriate parser and handling errors are all important aspects to this process that should be included in the candidate's response. Question 14. Give some examples of XML DTDS or schemas that you have worked with. Answer. Although XML does not require data to be validated against a DTD, many of the benefits of using the technology are derived from being able to validate XML documents against business or technical architecture rules. Polling for the list of DTDs that developers have worked with provides insight to their general exposure to the technology. The ideal candidate will have knowledge of several of the commonly used DTDs such as FPML, DocBook, HRML, and RDF, as well as experience designing a custom DTD for a particular project where no standard existed. Question 15. How does XML handle metadata? Answer. Because XML lets you define your own markup languages, you can make full use of the extended hypertext features of XML. See the question on links to store or link to metadata in any format, e.g. using ISO 11179 as a topic maps published subject with Dublin Core Warwick Framework or with Resource Description Framework RDF or even Platform for Internet Content Selection PICS. There are no freedom 
predefined elements in XML because it is an architecture, not an application. So it is not part of XML's job to specify how or if authors should or should not implement metadata. You are therefore free to use any suitable method. Browser makers may also have their own architectural recommendations or methods to propose. Oh